I'm Lawson, and I just cheered really hard for my team. Go team, go! Woohoo! You got this! And my team did not have it, they lost. I unfollowed them. That doesn't really put me in a good story mood. But you are here, and the story is here, and I'm gonna tell it. See, my cousin knows this kid Isaiah, and it's the opening day of the brand new swim park. Isaiah and his best friend Noah have been waiting forever. They've got their swim gear ready, all the gear, and as soon as they get to the pool, they're gonna jump right in off the high dive 20 times and then take a trip to the snack bar for the world's most gigantic popsicles. They're all ready to head out the door when it starts to rain and thunder and tornado lightning. They think maybe they can just wait it out, but Mom checks the website. The water park has just been shut down for the day. At first, Isaiah and Noah want to pout like babies. <laughs> but then Isaiah realizes, even though the water park is closed, he still has his best friend right here. And we've got a whole day free. Isaiah's got a choice to make. So he decides instead of diving into the pool, they can dive into a movie marathon. They gather a whole ocean of snacks, including some fishy ones, and they get ready for an epic day of all their favorite ocean themed movies. But maybe not the really scary one and they choose to have an epic day after all. So kids, only use the sofa as a high dive with parental permission. And always remember this, that choosing joy is one way God can work inside of you to change the world around you. You know what? My team may have lost, but they're not losers and I will refollow them just to brighten up their day. If they ever notice, I hope they do. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hello everyone, my name is Haley and things are about to get very wet around here. It's time for another summer tradition, the water balloon fight. But before we get to it, I think we should talk about another way you and I can make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. Usually to make a wave, you need a body of water like an ocean or a river. But for the kind of waves we're making, you need things like love and patience and joy. You can change the world with those things. Today, I'm hoping to make a wave of peace. In a water balloon fight, peace is the last thing you want. It's every person for themselves in a war of water where the most dry person at the end is the victor. But to demonstrate peace today, I'm gonna have a water balloon fight, but I'm not gonna throw a single water balloon. I think that's the best way to... <laughs> Uh, hold on! I was not ready! I wanted to say something first! Okay! If I'm going to demonstrate peace, I have to be... This is not funny, people! I have some serious things to say about peace. So please, stop! Oh. Nah. <laughs> In today's story, we're going to learn about two guys who are about to go to war and the one woman who was brave enough to stop them. So, let's take a break from the water balloon throwing until we get back. <sighs> <laughs> ah! 
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verses 1 through 35. Near the town of Carmel lived a wealthy man named Nabal. Money, 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 always sunny, yeah, in a rich man's world, woo! The world was not so sunny for anyone who had to be near Nabal, like his servants. Our boss's picture is right here in the dictionary beside foolish person. See? Nabal was also terribly rude. You, bring me another leg of mutton. What's wrong with this one? It's touching those peas. But you asked for peas. I asked for tea, you blockhead. I shall dump these peas on your noggin. But unlike Nabal, Abigail, his wife, had a clear mind and a wise heart. She kept a close eye on her husband's estate and did her best to keep him from destroying their lives with his quick temper. Tell me, how was the flock this season? Have we lost any sheep to raiders? Not a one, my lady. But last season our sheep were attacked by robbers a dozen times. We've had protection. Protection? How? David and his men have been camping nearby. As long as they've stayed near our flocks, they've kept us and the sheep from any harm. Very good. I've heard some say David will be king in Saul's place. Has Nabal thanked David for his help? Give thanks, Nabal. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny, my lady. I'll consider the matter. Let me know if anything changes. The time for sheep shearing neared, and Nabal ordered a grand party to celebrate. Music, drink, mutton, mm, bread, cakes, raisins. Are you writing this down? Yes, sir. But no peas. No peas. As Nabal ordered the festivities, 10 young men arrived to bring a message from David. That outlaw, what does he want? David says, may you live long and everything go well for you. <laughs> Only what I deserve. He says, I hear that you are clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. The whole time they were at Carmel, nothing that belonged to them was stolen. Please be kind to my men. Please give us anything you can find for us. <laughs> so, yes? Who is this David? Many servants are running away from their masters. Why should I give food to men who come from who knows where? So, no? Vamos! And don't let the door hit you on the way out. David's men quickly returned to camp. They found David's anger could be just as hot as Nabal's. Each of you put on your swords. In a short time, David and 400 of his men were marching up the mountain to confront Nabal. Word spread quickly. A servant raced to find Abigail. David sent messengers to Nabal and asked for a share of food, but Nabal was rude and shouted at them. You must do something or terrible trouble will come. Abigail didn't panic. Mm -mm. She took a deep breath. We have to get ahead of this. Take a list, please. On it. 200 loaves of bread, 200 bottles of wine, five sheep, a bushel of grain, 100 raisin cakes, uh, uh, 200 cakes of pressed figs. Any peas? No peas. Save those for Nabal. What else? Load it all on donkeys and start down the mountain. I'll follow. As David and his men quickly climbed the mountain, the caravan of donkeys and gifts made its way down the steep road. David's anger grew as he neared the mountain estate. He gripped his sword tightly. Everything we've done hasn't been worth a thing. I watched over this fellow's property, but he paid me back evil for good. I won't leave one of his men alive. What's this? Donkeys? And looks like food for a feast? At the back of the caravan, Abigail could see David as they met the donkeys. She took a deep breath, hopped off the donkey and ran forward, throwing herself to the ground at David's feet. Pardon your servant, sir. 
please don't pay any attention to that evil man, Nabal. He's always doing foolish things. But now the Lord has kept you from using your own hands to get even. I've brought a gift for you and the men who follow you. Abigail dared to look up. David is watching her closely. The Lord your God will give you a kingdom that will last. That's because you fight the Lord's battles. He'll appoint you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have to worry about how you killed people without any reason. The Lord your God will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Slowly, David nodded. He removed his hand from the hilt of his sword and reached down to help her up. Give praise to the Lord. He has sent you today to find me. You have shown a lot of good sense and kept me from using my own hands to get even. He has kept me from harming you. Prepare a feast for your men. You've earned every bit of it. Mm. Go home in peace. David accepted the gift and turned back instead of facing down Nabal. Abigail returned home to find her husband holding his giant party. Nabal, I've made peace. Peace? Ugh. Hate him. Woo Though David didn't kill him, Nabal soon met a dreadful end. Abigail and her entire household were saved because she chose to get creative and make peace. David was angry, right? So angry, he was ready to go to war with Nabal. He wanted revenge. It's a good thing Abigail stepped in when she did. She made what could have been a really bad situation better by helping David see things in a different way. Abigail helped make peace. Now, there are three types of people in this story, and chances are you're gonna be like every one of them in your life. You could be like Nabal, who says or does something that makes someone mad. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, got you in the bag when you weren't even playing. The best way to make peace if you're a Nabal is to admit you're wrong, say you're sorry, and make things right. Someday, you could be like David. You get mad at someone and you wanna get revenge. Oh, oh, throw that! If you're like David and you want to make peace, Sometimes it helps to think about the consequences of your anger. What will happen if I lose my temper? What will happen if I get revenge? And then there's Abigail, the peacemaker. When you're like her, it means you're standing outside of someone else's fight and you can see a way to make peace. Hey, 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 hey. you two are supposed to be friends. Now hand them over, hand them over. Thank you, thank, thank. What weren't handed? Oh, peacemakers can help others see their situations in different ways. They can stop arguments and fights before they get way out of control. <laughs> Water balloon fights are one thing, they're supposed to be fun, but other fights can hurt feelings, damage relationships, or even worse. So be an Abigail and make a wave of peace. The one thing to remember today is this, you can help others make peace. If this doesn't come naturally to you, th that's okay. Ask God for help. And remember, when you believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit living inside of you can also help you make peace. <laughs> well, now it's time for the actual water balloon fight. So I'll see you next time. <laughs> Well, I guess we used up all the balloons. <laughs> nope.